Your stomach plays a key role in your health and well-being, but there's often so much emphasis on the abs that we overlook the importance of what's going on inside. Dr. Carrie Strom is a gastroenterologist and an associate clinical professor at UCLA School of Medicine who can help us take better care of our stomach. Hi, you. <laughs> I'm good. Okay, good. now, we all want to work out, we all want to do ab work, et cetera, et cetera, but nothing's going to give us a flat stomach if we don't digest our food properly. Well, let's talk about what is the journey that our food takes so that people understand why it's so important to eat well. Okay, it's very complex. Okay, well, we're, you can make it simple We're going to make it very easy. Okay, good. Okay, obviously, when you eat food, your teeth are very important. Uh -huh. They break food down and the enzymes in your mouth help digest the carbohydrate. Your body can't digest food that's big. Right. It's gotta be small pieces. <laughs> Especially if it's a, a baseball. Especially if it's a baseball. <laughs> right. So we need to digest, and the digestion starts in the mouth. Right, your stomach doesn't have teeth, so that's why it's really important to chew your food That's well. right, that's why people that don't have teeth need dentures, mm -hmm. because you need to chew the food to break it up comes down your esophagus, which is the tube from your mouth to your stomach, uh -huh. and the stomach mixes everything up. Right. Acid secreted there, there's enzymes that help break down protein, and most of the digestion takes place in the small intestine. Oh, and we have a And it's a really, model. really long, too. It's really long. Yes. In fact, I'm gonna show people how long this is, because this is the 27, I mean, this is a rope, but the journey that your food has to take is 27 feet long, and you can only imagine, because I'm just gonna keep pulling, and you can talk about how important it is for us to eat good food. As you pull this through, I'm gonna tell you what it does, okay? <laughs> okay. So most of the digestion of food occurs in the small intestine. Uh -huh. The absorption of fats, carbohydrates, and protein. What if there's a knot like this one? That, that, that's <laughs> a bowel obstruction, that's not good. Okay. That's, that'd be bad. Um, so I mean, look at all this. It's huge, because we need it. We need all the, the entire length to do the digesting. Right. So the carbohydrates are broken down into sugars, and that's our main energy source. Mm -hmm. Our diet should be made up of 50% carbohydrates. Right, so these high-protein diets, what do you think about them? Well, I don't, I don't think they're all that good. Uh, I don't think they're, so they're either. They're not that good because protein is, bro is broken down in the small intestine, stored in the muscle, could be used as energy, but then you're breaking down your muscle mass to use it. Mm -hmm. So that's not an efficient way to use energy. So our main energy source is carbohydrates. The carbohydrate is 50% of our energy expenditure, mm -hmm. okay? You have to eat the right type of carbohydrate. Which are? Well, whole grains. Whole grains. But really whole grains. Fruits. Fruits. Are a very good snack. Right. Okay, because they are not the simple ones. Simple ones are very easy to digest, but you may get a rebound effect later. Mm -hmm. So it's not a healthy thing to do. Fruits are a great snack. Yeah. Grapes, uh, apples, pears, oranges, and there's fiber in there too. And it's good wet food too. It's, it's very, sort very healthy. Keeps everything moving. Very, very healthy. Now fats, we talked about fats digestion mm -hmm. in the small intestine. Fats, everybody needs fats. Maybe 25% of their diet should be fats. But we want- but good fats, right? The, we want the unsaturated fats, which are the healthy fats. We need fats. Olive oil. Olive oil. Avocado. Um, yes. Right. Exactly, things that you've written about in your book. Yeah. So the saturated fats are the ones that get solid at room temperature. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones that plug up the heart and make things very bad, so we don't recommend that. Less than 10% of the fats should be unsaturated fats. Proteins, right. okay? We talked about high protein diet. Probably your diet should be about 15% protein. And people, get, they have this, mis, you know, this, this image that it's supposed to be 40% or something like 60% of protein. No, we, we need protein, but we don't need that much. Mm -hmm. And that's a very inefficient way to use energy in our body. Carbohydrate is the way to go. I always heard, I remember when I first got into health, I always heard this phrase, fat can only burn in a carbohydrate flame. And it always reminded me that when I wanted to work <clears> out or I wanted stamina for a long period of time, I had to have some kind of carp, you know, a complex carbohydrate so that my body would have something to work on. Yep. But now I understand more. That's right, and most, most people that are athletic, mm -hmm. the athletes take a higher carbohydrate diet before their, their yeah, feet. a marathon or That's anything right, else. That's right, because carbohydrates are a very efficient way to use energy. Right, okay, now let's talk about portion control, because that's always big with people. And you know that's why we have a baseball here. I mean, this would be a serving of fruit according to you know um, certain terry, certain dietary guidelines. This would be about three ounces of protein, let's say. This would be about eight ounces. Well, maybe this would be more like ten. Um, this would be about a cup of uh, sal a service of like lettuce or salad, 
and this would be a, a small thing. This is like one ounce, one ounce of protein. So that would be the difference. And if you're talking about a carbohydrate serving, then usually it's your fist that's like the size of uh, pasta, a serving of pasta, right. a whole grain pasta, hopefully, but, or brown rice or something like that. But the problem is most people are fast food, they're on the run, they don't have time to sit and prepare this and that, whatever, you know how it is. Right. People eat the wrong stuff and they're not thinking about what they're doing and the problem is that people don't get the signal from the gut to their brain because they're not I concentrating know. on it that they're full. It's just a question of eating good food mindfully. That's right, we have yeah. to think about what we do. Oh, well thank you so much, this is so great and so much great information for everyone. Thank you much. Okay, and I'm, I think we should all walk around with our 27 feet of rope to remind us of the journey that our food has to take. We take it for granted, but there's we a do. lot going on there. <laughs> Absolutely, thank you so much. You're welcome, thank you. Weight control is all about portion control. Before you start eating any meal, decide in advance exactly the kind of food you're going to eat, and more importantly, not eat. And then no matter what, stick to your plan. You might need willpower the first 15 minutes after your last bite, but after that, it's a piece of cake. I, I mean, it's as easy as pie. Okay, it's a walk in the park. There's always one room in the house where everyone hangs out, and for most families, it's the kitchen. The kitchen is the center of all the traffic and all the chaos, and, and that's probably why it's not the smooth running health factor that it should be. In fact, I don't think most people would eat in a restaurant that functions the way their kitchen does. Well, for years, my friends, the Roy Failers, have been asking me to come over and help get their kitchen organized. Today's the day. A lot of people don't know how to organize their kitchen. That's the biggest problem, because what you want to make sure is that everything is convenient. Let's see what their kitchen is like. Hi. Oh, no. <laughs> Mom! Hi. <laughs> Mary Lou, what's going on? Oh. Hi. I just hey. thought I'd Mary Lou and who? <laughs> what did you bring? Oh, my God. Well, you know what? You said you wanted your kitchen done. So just take me to your kitchen and let's see. And since we have three kids, there's somebody always eating in there. It seems like it's a, it, it seems like it's a cafe. It's a 24-hour diner. OK. So, oh, my gosh. I've been here, and your kitchen is beautiful. It's not a mess at all. It's, just very disorganized inside. Really? I, I can't find the things that I'm looking for when I go to cook. It's not working let's, for me, Mary It's Lynn. not? OK, well, no. you know how much I love no. this. So let's just start opening drawers. This I is a lot of utensils. utensils. I'm not even sure what you use them for. There's no system You know to what? It. There's, yeah, that's, I think that's what I'm really lacking. They're in here. Now, do you use these all the time? Well, they used them when they were a lot younger. A lot of that could be out of here. What you want to do is make sure that everything right here is everything you use all the time. Aluminum foil down here when Yeah, well, I got some stuff. I got some of the other stuff over here. That's not the best place for it. This is like a good utensil drawer, immediate things, because this is your cooking area. Where would your pot holders be? Liza, where are our pot holders? Nina, go, go, go. Where are your Wrong direction. Holders? Where are they? They're in there. They're next to the dishwasher, in case your dishwasher gets hot. <laughs> oh, with some more plastic. <laughs> Ziploc bags are like, where's Waldo? <laughs> See, it's so disorganized, I can't even find them. <laughs> we want to marry things together. Yeah. Let's, let's put the little families of things all together. Yeah. Well, that's good that you've got vitamins someplace, but maybe it doesn't go with it's protein good. shakes, yeah. coffee, toothpaste, and hair supplies. <laughs> and oh, this is? What? Cereal. Oh, extra cereal. Cereal. <laughs> <laughs> banana. Dad. All right, I'm hiding bananas. <laughs> well, it's better that he's hiding bananas than other things. And your pantry? Across the way. It's in another room? Yes. Completely? <laughs> this is it. Was this originally designed to be for, like, your dishes, your dining room dishes? Yes, yes. I see, but you didn't have enough storage I in there? I, that's what I felt like, yes. It's kind of consistent with the rest. <laughs> the miscellaneous closet. Yeah. I think it's because we took advantage of all the space. I think it's all just, like, everything took over nothing. OK, we sent your parents away, and I'm going to send you guys on a scavenger hunt in this kitchen, because cool. there are a lot of different things, OK? And we're going to start getting all this stuff organized, OK? OK. Plastic bags and aluminum foil and stuff. Let's get all of those in a pile over there. The paper goods, um, let's get those all in an order. You have a lot of You don't have to go shopping for a long time. <laughs> Take everything down, and you're going to hand it to your brother. And... I want you to try reading something for me, OK? So we're going to see what things you can pronounce. 
Ingredients, rice, sugar, cocoa, partially hydro, hydro, artificial flavor, BHT has been added to the packaging. There are really hard words in there. As I always say to my kids, if you can't read it, you can't eat it. Okay, do you have your eyes closed? I do. Okay. okay. All right, you guys. You will believe this. It won't be obvious at first, as oh, we yeah. know. Okay, open them. All right. Okay, it's <laughs> definitely cleaner. The main thing is that you have a great kitchen, no doubt about it. Everybody watching this right now is going, how could you possibly go wrong with this kitchen? What I, we wanted to do was just mix some of the stuff that you have with some other ideas, you know, some different food and some different utensils, things like this. It's your silverware in the right drawer. And these are all your small utensils Fantastic. with these nice draining things instead of the kind that like catch. All right, so here are your plates, which were quite like, beautiful yeah. and great and organized. I recognize that. And wow! All the glasses. So now they, oh. your kids have grown up and they're ready for, you know, these kind of glasses. Yeah. Okay, now <laughs> we have all your cutting boards here. Every family should have is a set of cutting boards because you want to put your poultry on one and it's got to be easily washed, you know, and you want to put your fruit and vegetables on another and it's near the knives. Your cutting boards were across the tape, across the way, and now they're all together with the knives. It was a good kitchen to begin with. This is just even better. I'm so happy that we have things more accessible and more organized and, and, and just begging for us to use them. Down here, remember, we were on that yeah. scavenger hunt for all your different aluminum foils and stuff like that. Everything is in here now. Fantastic. Okay. Wow. Because your oven is here. We have your Potholders. Yes. Nearby. Very logical. All your baking stuff is in one section now. Wow. This is your whole can section. You had all your cans out there. Oh, yeah. So we put all your cans here. Your refrigerator. Wow. It's just better organized. All your uh, salad dressings That's are amazing. together, all your condiments. And we got some great stuff from Whole Foods for you. Coming through here, all your pots and pans. And we got you some new pots and pans. Wow, so because your other pots and pans, uh, they, they were Teflon and they yes. were scraping, they were a little scraped yes. up. So they were leaching aluminum into your food. Uh, and I that's not good. Except responsibility. You do? <laughs> He's the cook, apparently. Oh. Here we have all your cereals up here. And your snacks are all down here. So this is the Excellent. snack section. You actually have some space. Drawer. You have an extra drawer. So here's like your, we got swapped out some healthy stuff. Right. We still have some of the other stuff. And we have, okay, now do you want to try reading the ingredients? Sure. Okay. Corn flour, molasses, oat flour, honey, caramel color, salt, cocoa, natural flavors, vitamin E. <laughs> a few less than the other. Yep. Remember your closet that was, had all kinds of different things? All right, now look. <gasps> oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> it just has all the party stuff. See, and now you can see everything. I can see That's everything. Star, I know. Parts. And you can actually move your dining room stuff in here if you want to, or just leave it as the party closet. We have a party now. Yeah, we have to have a party. <laughs> what do you think of your kitchen? I love it. Oh, love it. Oh, love it. Oh, it's it's so much better. Oh, you're welcome. It, does it make you want to cook and eat healthy? Yeah. And, all right. And you know what? You should Group hug. Group hug. Group hug. Next time you're shopping, pick up a package of Sushi Nori. Besides being chock full of vitamins and minerals, it's also really versatile. You can wrap it around anything from salad to brown rice and veggies to salmon, cucumbers, and tomatoes. I mean, once you get the hang of it, you're going to use it all the time in place of bread. <laughs> My kids love it so much that, believe it or not, I put sheets of it in their lunch bags. This show is all about finding your center. And as far as I'm concerned, there's no better way than by eating centered foods. Well, what are centered foods? <laughs> You're about to find out. Because Lee Gross, the chef de cuisine of M Cafe de Chaya, believes that the more you get out of your food, the more you get out of your life. Welcome, Lee. Hi, thank so you. good to see you. You too. Okay, so a lot of people out there 
don't know anything about macrobiotics. Mm. And this is one of my favorite subjects because I really think it's an amazing way to eat. I, I think it should really be the basis of how you choose to eat the rest of your life anyway, not just when you're sick. But people hear macrobiotics and they all of a sudden think of illness or they think of something big and scary. And can you just explain in a few words what macrobiotics is so that the people aren't, out there aren't scared? Well, macrobiotics to me really is about food because I am a chef. Uh, it's about common sense, uh, intuitive way of eating. And the idea in macrobiotics is to sort of stay in the center. Well, let's talk about what the extreme foods would be if you place The fun ones. Yes, the, the fun ones. Uh -huh. Extreme salt. Well, sal salt's contracted. extreme, but we can get even more extreme. I mean, yeah. we're talking heavy animal food, pork products, lamb, beef, which is good food. Um, but then we're talking about heavy metals, mercury, that are unfortunately is in our, are in our oceans now, um, so certain chemicals and pharmaceuticals. So it's all the really tight, tight contracted yes. food going all the way up to the more expansive food, right. which is... We get alcohol. And, and yes, yeah. alcohol and sugar. Sugar and, and recreational the, drugs, all the fun ones. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. but they don't make you feel good in the long run no, they, because they, your they body is looking for balance compensate. all day long. Exactly. So if, right. you, if a night of binge drinking will lead to a morning of ravenous eating of big cheesy omelets, which right. can be great. But, but again, this is... That pendulum is swinging all day long. Exactly. You know, when I first studied macrobiotics years ago, when I first got into health and food, um, I read about yin and yang and the whole idea of expansive and contractive. And right. I thought I'd experiment on myself because mm. I read that your body's always looking for balance. So I sat there one day with a Twizzler in one hand <laughs> and a pretzel in the other. And I went all day salt long between sweet, Twizzler, salt sweet, pretzel. Salt sweet. Yeah, yeah, and that's what people do. Yeah. They have a soda, which is, you know, sugary, and then they want their chips, and then they want their soda to balance it, exactly. and they go back and forth. Or it's people... I always say that one of the best examples of, you know, the yin and the yang or the expansive contractive in yourself is after a tight, contracted, salty meat meal, what do you want but a sugary, puffy, creamy dessert? The opposite. Mm -hmm. Or you can also look at things like stress as very contracted. Right. Stress is very yang, right. and that's why people go to alcohol when they feel stressful, right. or they go to candy when they feel stressful. Right. It's just their body is looking for balance. Mm -hmm. And there's a really good way of maintaining balance, which is eating the foods that fall in the center of the spectrum. That's right. Centered food equals centered behavior. Maybe we should talk about what those are. Absolutely. <laughs> so tell us what you brought us today, because I know this is beautiful food. Oh, right. So let's talk about the food and what this kind of food would be good sure. for. Sure. Well, first of all, all this food, it looks relatively familiar, I think, to people out there. Uh, sandwiches, Caesar salad, a wrap. Uh, all based on whole grains and vegetables, which right. are the foods that fall in the center of the yin-yang spectrum. And that would be, the center of the uh, spectrum would be um, the, the vegetables, the grains, the legumes, mm -hmm. some of the more centered fruits, etc., like apples, pears, things like Pretty that. Pretty much plant-based foods, mm -hmm. just as whole and natural as possible. And try to stay away from the extreme foods. Right. Okay. All, all this is pretty much centered, except they're in a recognizable uh, Format or fashion. So this looks like a typical Caesar salad. It does. Except yeah. it isn't. It, well, it is. It actually tastes very, very close. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I think I fooled quite a few people with this. Um, it's, the, the dressing is made from sunflower seeds, right. smoked dulse, which is a sea vegetable, uh -huh. uh, lemon juice, garlic, of course. And this Parmigiano Reggiano is it's nothing not, of the sort. It's, it's actually a miso cured tofu cheese, which we make at the restaurant. Okay, so what's this? This is a madras tempeh wrap. It's uh -huh. a, basically it's a wrap sandwich, uh, flavored flavors inspired by India. Mm -hmm. um, tempeh is used as the main protein. And that's an also good um, because it'll make you, especially here in California where it's warm, it'll make you sweat in a way, which is helping regulate your body yes, temperature. Yes, there are some spices in there. Um, and tempeh is very, I love tempeh. I love it. It's one of my favorite foods. And now. explain what tempeh is for the people who don't tempeh know. Tempeh actually is. is a traditional food that's been made in Indonesia for forever, uh, derived from soybeans. Um, actually, well, this, it gets kind of interesting because they actually let them mold and ferment. They press but it's it healthy mold. It's, <laughs> mold is what makes everything taste good in this world. You get a lot of um, vitamins and minerals that otherwise would not be present in the bean itself. Right. Um, fermenting actually. But it's all naturally fermented. It's not put through a you know, whole process. Okay, what's this? This also uh, uses tempeh. This is uh, crispy tempeh with coconut creamed lentils, whipped sweet potatoes, and wilted greens. So there's no animal products whatsoever. Absolutely not. And you'd feel really good after eating all of this. Very satisfied. You would really enjoy yourself. Tons of protein. So it's great if you're going to, you know, if you need to like ha have a lot of energy that day. Mm -hmm. And what about this? This, this is one of my favorites. This is what we call the Melrose Avenue Mufaletta. Uh -huh. Based on one of my favorite sandwiches that they do down in New Orleans. Uh, usually they stuff it with tons of meat and mortadella and cheese and lots of stuff. And pickled vegetables, an olive relish. Now I do the same thing. I take the same flavors, basil, the zesty olives, 
sun dried tomatoes. You take all the good stuff from that. Uh, all the flavors, the all the flavors yeah. from the mufalepe. Yeah, but I mean all the really healthy, good things, ingredients that, that are already there. That are exactly. Already there. And then instead of meats and cheeses, I use again our miso cured tofu cheese, smoked tofu, seitan which is sort of wheat meat, or Buddha food is what they used to call it. It's uh -huh. uh, uh, derived from wheat gluten, um, and it's, it gives a very good mouthfeel and good flavor. It almost tastes, it almost has a consistency of meat. It does, and for people who are transitioning... Yes, because um, it's, it's important to sort of take your palate through an adjustment. Exactly. Because if you go to something, you know, if you start tasting this food right away, you have to make sure that it's flavorful so that you'll, you'll fall in love with the food. And that's what M Cafe is all about. It's about really bridging the gap between yes. where people are now and where people not ought to be, but, you but know, will naturally arrive at if they start eating more plant-based foods that are more familiar. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. You're this welcome. is so great. And, uh, you know, I want to encourage everyone out there to start eating more centered foods. Pay attention to your mood swings throughout the day. Maybe they're brought on by, you know, sort of that Twizzler pretzel yep, sort of mentality seesaw. of going through, yeah, swinging that pendulum from extreme salt to extreme sugar all day. And when you're crashing at night or if you're tired and you find yourself needing a cup of coffee and so then and all of a sudden you start that cycle, et cetera, et cetera. It might be because you're not eating centered foods. So thank you so much oh, today, Lee, and I can't wait to eat. Yeah, please. Thanks. <laughs> the process of shaping up your life can at times feel overwhelming. We tend to focus far too much on the finish line and overlook the challenges and joys of the journey. And too often, our motivation comes from a desire to look younger, or thinner, and sexier. And that's okay, but I urge you instead to shape up from the inside out. Eat for your health, not for your thighs. Exercise for your wellness, not for your triceps. The healthy you comes from within. So enjoy the journey, because you're closer than you think.